Well, for, first off, I'd like to say that this initiative, uh, well, in my mind, it's uh, to support all the uh, efforts done uh, when it comes to presenting the resource, fam the, the various corpora uh, lexical resources at all the uh, national repositories, as well as to support the uh, central VLO effort. One of our main goals was to provide a list of resources that's manually curated. Uh, we find that there are uh, many resources that that seem to be uh, very worthwhile for man, many different kinds of disciplines. So you have literary corpora, you have historical corpora, but in many cases there this the, the kind of metadata that you find there, from the perspective of a, of a humanities scholar, it might be inadequate. You often find stuff like um, descriptions of the collection process, or sometimes these these descriptions read like uh, acknowledgments to whoever funded the corpus. But you often get very little data on the actual content and its applicability. This is the main aim of the resource families, I think, from the perspective of content. So basically to report, to present this curated list of, list of Clarin, Clarin Corpora uh, that highlights um, their usability. And on, and on the other hand, of course, to support, to basically support the Clarin initiative to to uh, uh, make all the resources that Clarim provides uh, more well known to the general public, because I think many, many of the uh, of the researchers who aren't part of this community uh, basically just don't know what's out there. One of the first case, the first case center interview was um, uh, perhaps one of my favorites, and, and this I think also betrays my bias because I'm a syntactician. But it was on the uh, Czech and Norwegian tree banks, and uh, we were interviewing. Uh, uh, I'll probably mispronounce his name. Helge Dubik is a professor emeritus now, uh, one of the I think most uh, uh, prominent people when it comes to tree bank developments in Europe and, wh and I, uh, why I liked the interview very much because we not only talked about his own research based on the uh, uh, Norwegian Ines tree banks but he also provided a very uh, useful showcase of how researchers can uh, search via the tree banks which isn't easy because uh, uh, the syntactic parsing entails the sort of logical embedding, embedding relations between the sentential constituents. And uh, he also works a lot on uh, providing uh, easy use cases for uh, uh, using the Ines tree banks, which is uh, crucial, I think, because if you aren't a specialist in syntactic parsing, even if there was no one to guide you, you'd have a very hard time, I think, using the uh, tree banks. And I think this is, for, for syntacticians, one of the best ways to get data. Uh, even though one of the, I guess, one of the problems of the tree banks is that they're, they're not available for all the languages. Uh, and, and most of the use cases he does is, is for Norwegian, but they're uh, uh, nevertheless very illustrative. Uh, and aside from, here, from him, there were also other interviews. The Latvian one was with a folklore scholar and she presented how they crowdsource transcriptions of folklore material. So people bring, uh, I don't know, some old materials from their village, which has, uh, which is somehow related to folklore and then they help in the transcription and in the interpretation. So that was uh, extremely interesting.